Welcome back to Satisfactory Release. My name is Nilaus and we are back here with our glorious bus base now supplemented with drones. We are bringing a few things in and more things will be brought in as needed. What we're going to do today is the top right hand corner. We're going to be focusing on completing phase four. And that is, I'm sure for a lot of people, seems like a monumental task that takes a lot of effort. And I'm going to show you how little effort it actually takes, depending, of course, on whether you want to build it yourself or if you want to download my blueprints uh, as as is available to patron supporters but what we're going to do is we are going to focus on design work today so we're going to make a cool design to get all these things done we have already the one thing done so let's go let's see if this one is getting us somewhat to the right location that's actually a really nice fit so with the first we have the first one the first one is uh, is uh, the last one is actually this part here we just loop through this okay that, that was pretty cool did not work. Okay, but let's uh, go back to... We, we can do this one a little bit, just so everyone's happy that we're not cheating or anything like that. I mean, we're going to switch away from it at some point. But anyway, this is the nuclear plaster, and we have an abundance of nuclear plaster. Please let me show that. Yes, an abundance of nuclear plaster. That's awesome. And what we're going to do is we can just take 100 of those and throw it in. So what we need to do now is we need to get over here to make some... Yeah, that sucks. Oh, look at that. That looks so cool. That looks so cool. Okay, we're going to be flying this and we're going to switch on to proper flying as we need to do some design work. But what we need to do here is we are going to branch things off the bus to make some uh, some cool designs here that takes care of all the stuff that we need. So let's have a look first at recipes. The director system that is here, director assembly system, that is supercomputers. We have an abundance of that. We have 15 of those per minute and we even have so many that we're just throwing them away to for free tickets. Uh, well, they're not free if we pay supercomputers for them. And adaptive control unit is uh, something we can create. And this is something we already have a creation for. We already have that in our Blueprint repository. So we can actually look at that. And we have that. So this one already exists. And now I'm a little bit annoyed that I'm on the ground. This is the adaptive control. Now we're up in the air. And this is the one we built for the completion of tier or phase three to unlock tier seven and eight and uh, so this one you know we could use this but obviously since we need to also add another building here which will make the director assembly system then this is not going to work so we're going to be taking this one out but we're going to be uh, keeping it in spirit so let's get some baseline of things this is definitely going to be a thing here let's see if this one is scaled fully up 3.75 i want it to be at five per minute so uh, that is not going to be enough. So if this is five per minute, then I have to set this as one point uh, new. No. 2.5. Yes. What? Oh, right. Half of 2.5. 1.25. Yeah. So that is 2.5 outbound. Yes. That's going to be what it is. There. This will be that part. Um, this will require... Two, this will be two and a half. If they, since I need 500 and then I get two and a half plus two and a half, so that's five. That means 100 minutes. 100 minutes seems to me like that's a good benchmark. That's one hour and 40 minutes of just constant operation. And, you know, that's that's easy time to just get other stuff done. So we need, in order for us to do that, we need two and a half times two. So five adaptive control units. So let's get that and figure out if we can do that. Adaptive control unit. And I'm going to be just smashing all of this in and lo and behold five is exactly what we can do just barely but exactly circuit boards from the bus heavy module frames from the bus and computers on the bus or from a box we'll um we'll, we'll see that's totally up to you but i'm gonna make it as as lined input this time around because the quantities are significantly higher so feeling it off the bus is so much easier but you might choose to do it differently maybe you have a different setup but in this case you can use this blueprint just stamp it down put things into boxes and wait one uh, 100 minutes. This one requires automated wiring, which is then the next or the first step of this process, uh, automated wiring, and that stays us in cables. So again, we step back and say, okay, cables then. But this is not enough. How many, we need to trace it. So that's 12.5. Okay, again, at this one, and again with this one to see where we can be. 12.5 again maxed maxed out so we max it out 6.25 status coming from the bus and 225 cables so let's get figure out how to make cables there are actually many cable recipes here and like this was disgustingly awful this one is pretty fast but rubber mm, 
it's... I'm going to take this one. We're just going to take the default recipe. You can choose whatever you want, but I, and I'm not going to go with the iron wire, actually, because iron wire is slower. It takes nine for 24 seconds, and this one is two per four seconds. Oh, this, yeah, 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 this is 30 per minute, but the iron wire is, oh, this Katerium wire. Oh, we're, we're doing cables. Psh, silly me, we're doing cables. This is the cable one. So do I want to do that? And do I want to do that? Let's see how that's. 150. I just need to make 120, so that's going to be like this. There you go. Oh, no, no, no. It's it's not actually... Uh, oh, funny, I can't click that out now. Yeah, I'm going to put that in. It's actually going to be 125 divided by 2. There. Because 125 cables inbound. That's important. So, we need 62.5... That means I need wire 125 inbound. So I need to make wire somewhere. And I'm going to do that with Katerium wire because Katerium wire is pretty close to what I need. Only, unfortunately, pretty close. So I'll just go that one. And it's only like 15.625 Katerium ingots, which is still something. But what if I build it the normal way this way? Then I would have to... I'd have to do this to keep it up, right? Yes. And I really don't want to do do that it's it's just it's just this one so um i'm gonna do with the kitarium wire you have options and this is gonna be one two five outbound yes you're gonna go out you're gonna go out and this one has to stay in so that is all we need and if we look at these buildings then it doesn't really seem feasible that they can be fitting in a four by four but it can definitely be fit in a five by five so that's going to be the next part. Let's put it into a 5x5 a blueprint builder here. And try to sort of see what we can do. So we're going to be doing a loading, the template build that's here. Awesome. And then we are going to be starting to make move these up here. We are going to start by saying, I want this to be out in the side. Mm, something like this. And I'm going to give it a little bit more of a breathing room. And this will then have to be one of the inputs. Let's go that little bit off here. And that's a nice distance. It's also aligned really well. So we'll do that one. Okay, so this is the two final outbounds. The reason why it's because I need to be able to get the up here. Actually, I want it to get here and here. And then I want to make sure that I can... Yeah, see that's getting a little bit too close. It kind of works, but as I do this, it's also kind of overlapping here, isn't it? Nah, it's kissing. It's kissing. It's not tipping. That's uh, as we say. There we go. Look at that. They're very good friends. Fine. We might move it if we have enough space. Then this part is the adaptive control, right? Uh, where do we have this? I'll just copy this one in here, and I'll copy this one in here. Yeah, this is the adaptive controls. I need to make automated wiring. And automated wiring should be put out into one of these locations. So let's see. This is probably as close as it can be to going down. And that is the wiring here. Now there's not a whole lot of space left. But I can put one... Hmm. That is probably too close to get it in here. So it probably has to be like this. Something. And then give it some space. And then I'm going to do that one for the other one. So we're going to take. Yeah. So this is basically this. Uh, let's get the numbers in here. Copy into that. And you into that and it goes in here then we can get stuff up okay so first thing we get in is the catarium into the wire the wire into the cables the cables in here into the automated wiring which means i need status coming in next to it right there then let's come in here automated wiring and i need to supplement the circuits heavy and computers that's going to be like this, there, there, and there. And just go in. 
because this will then go out and go into that location, which will then be supplemented here by the supercomputers coming from below. That's good. Right. Um, I actually wanted to come in from this side. Now let's see it. But that means the whole thing up here has to be rotated. Mm. Well, basically what I want to do is, this should be pretty simple. I can take these things and say this is an inbound of supercomputers. So if you come in from this side, let's just do that so that it connects. We just listen. That has the kick. Yeah. And inbound. And then let's, that's the final, oh, the final outbound is still missing. Yeah, yeah. And that needs to be this way. Is that correct? Nope, it's not correct. Okay. Again. And I can probably build it here and still connect. And I'm going to build everything in ground level in this case, if I can. Because I'm going to get things in from ground level. And this is the other final product outbound. Oof. Uh, then we have... This is going to be... Uh, that's the Caterium. And here we have the Status. I'm going to leave them all the way up to the edge here. That this is where we get things in. And then I have several things here. And that's one. And then the other one will go. Oops. And this can then go the other way. I think. This day. This one in. And this one in. And the other one here. That's the last input output we have. And that goes. Yeah. Alright, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven inputs. Well, six inputs, one output. So what we need to do is we need to do power, we need to do labels, and then that should be it. Oh, we also need to do like lights on this side. It just looks better from this side. Now we can see I've marked it up what is going on each belt and I've told you how many I need of each. And in order to get the 500, we need outbound. So you might uh, want to limit it because on the one hand, uh, it's nice to just have the bus feeding in here. But on the other hand, it's gonna be on a long belt back to our space elevator. And maybe you don't wanna waste all of your supercomputers. Maybe you will save up to 250 supercomputers and then put them in and then be sure to go out and not have it sort of on a bus. While other things like the 1,250 of the circuits, you might just go like, yeah, whatever, we'll just grab those. Uh, but there might be some things that are too expensive for you to sort of be careless about them, like, for example, 250 supercomputers. So that could be something you put in the box, and then the rest will sort of just absorb what it is, but then you get here. One thing you have to be mindful of is that when you start it, the first one will not craft correctly. The first one will not be a double output because the first, and it will also not be with the, the right power because this 15 will go and it'll do one iteration of normal power. And then the next one will be scaled up with the clock speed and the, the slooping. So that's the first build. We are simply going to be putting it in and we are going to be putting it in. Uh, let's see, that is the director system phase something. And I'm going to rotate it so that it's facing towards us and I'm going to be putting it right there cool now here's a, a weird thing um, clear planner and here's a weird thing okay so what I've decided to be is that I'm bringing the output resource back the same way but that's not actually what I want I actually want this one to go the other side so I had to fix that as well because I want the output to be out here going out on the back and going down the side and then going into the space elevator. I am aware that I could just move the space elevator, but now it kind of feel that it should be there. It seems a little bit silly if I if I move it, like wh wh what about the space station? It's kind of attached. So we'll, we'll keep it that way. All right, so that was the first thing. Let's uh, look at uh, the next thing. The next thing will be hopefully, I think it'll be a lot easier because that's the magnetic thing. Let's look at the magnetic uh, field generator here. 
That's the versatile framework and some electromagnetic control rods. Electromagnetic controls, we got that. And uh, then we have the versatile framework. And we have two different options. This one is an atrocious alternative with replacing it. But we're going to do beams, but beams are not going to be steel beams. These steel beams are made of, of aluminum aluminum beams. Because that's a hell of a lot. Look at, look at how much cheaper it is. Four to one or three to three. Uh, yes, please. So that means we don't really need a lot of buildings. That means I can probably just, it's just three buildings if I can get it scaled up fast enough. Load blueprint, we're going to be loading our template. So we can do this template design here. Actually, I should be looking at it from the side because this is the way I want to get it in, I think. Yes. All right. So um, what did we want? We want a, an assembler. Let's start with an assembler over here. Oops. Try again. There. Hmm. Let's put it here and let's put it in the middle because why not? That's kind of in the middle. All right, this will be our magnetic field generator. Cool. And I need to get this to five per minute so that I can get this done in 100 minutes. And let's just do this and see what we get. Five. What a coincidence. So and I need 6.25 versus our framework. First our framework is also made in one of these things. So let's just build it here. Sure. Versatile framework, not a wireless framework, but a versatile. And it's 6.25. Let's see what we can do. Oh, uh, what is it? It's 6.25. Uh, yeah, okay. Never mind. Really? 6.25 divided by 2. That's just crazy how low this is. Okay, don't need that. Hmm. Huh. Now, obviously, we could just make it faster, but there's really no point in making it faster. So, it just feels wrong. Let me just check again. 6.25 for five of these. Huh, okay. And this one will then uh, require steel beams. So we need to make steel beams somehow. And we'll make that in here. Does that seem... Uh, that's the middle. And there'll be steel beams made of aluminium. That's a little bit cheating. Do I care about upgrading here? This is now 18.75. So I'm just going to put this as output of 18.75. There we go. Nah. No reason to do and use any more slugs for something like this. And I mean, this this is this can't be that difficult to set up. So that goes in. This one goes. I oh know in. Yeah, and that means just a single inbound there, and this is the single outbound, and this is the single inbound, and this is the single inbound. All right, inbound here. And this, this is also an inbound. And this is an inbound. Oops. Whoa. Hold on. I got a little bit carried away there. And then this rotate it and get it out. Cool. So with just three done, then just let's uh, set up the under the engineering floor and the signs as well. And here we have it again. It's very simple. Just uh, some lines in and out, and then the quantities needed. Uh, I'm going to here. Yeah, this is the magnetic, and we go here. And I rotate it so that it actually points towards me with the inputs. And that looks fine. Good. So that's the second one. And then let's do the last one. What is the last one? That's the propulsion. That's here. This is very expensive. Turbo motor, cooling system. Fused module frames, those are all things we have on the bus. And then we have the modular engine, which we also need to make. So this one's going to be interesting because it actually needs a propulsion. And it needs a modular engine as well. So the modular engine is going to be built in this one. Modular engine. And then the modular engine needs a smart plating. So smart plating comes in here. All this is built ad hoc. And then we scale up. So this one. What is the output? This is only going to be two and a half per minute because I still want it to be done in. Yeah, so this is way too much. And then it's 1.25. There we go. So this is 2.5 per minute so that it completes in 100 minutes. That means I need 3.125 modular engines. Hmm. Okay. And um, we're going to do that because it's an expensive build. This makes two. So we're definitely going to be needing the full scale here. 
That is 3.125 divided by 2. There we go. That produces 3.125. And then motors got another bus. A rubber got another bus. And smart plating don't have it. So also smart plating 3.125. Uh, do you want to buff this one? I don't know. It doesn't, no, it doesn't. This is completely trivial. There. And then this is outputting 3.125. There we go. And that's good. So these three things, can we put those in a box uh, or in a blueprint? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we can. So let's uh, give that a shot again over here. And we're going to load a blueprint. We're going to load our template. There we go. I can't find the mouse. That's gone. And there we go. I'm going to start from this side again, uh, just to make it more easily recognizable. And I lost my Q button, as usual. All right. So I'm going to be smashing this one up here because we're going to need to have two of these and there is enough room for this so that's a little bit too close i think this is probably nicer and there's enough space back here to encompass it so that's fine this one is good and that looks pretty well aligned yeah sure Mm, I think I wanted this one the same way because that makes it easier for inputs. There. And are they same distance from the middle? Yes. Right. So let's get the design here. This is the final design. So that goes over on the side here. And then the, that was the propulsion. And this is the modular engine there and then we need the last parts which will be positioned over as close as we can to make it go yes and this is then the smart planing yes don't know what's so smart about this planing but hey that is fine so what we're going to do is we are going to do one two three four five six no that's not true this one only has Motor, rubber, and smart plating. So motor and rubber come in here. Then we're going to need you. That. Inbound and inbound. These are the three things. This is turbo motors, cooling systems, and radio control units? No, fuse module frames. Okay. No radio control units for this one. That goes in. That's happy. And we have the final outbound out of here. And then we need two more inputs here, which will be right in the middle of everything. There we go. Now that needs to be brought in and that's also gonna be super easy because we can basically take all of them and just point them this way. And this as well. And this one. And then One goes this side, and the other one goes the other side. Sure. That works fine. So we got all these inbound, and then we have the final outbound, which we can then get. Oops. I'm just going to drag you over here. Like that. Alright, let's put up the signs and uh, finish up the belting. Here we go. This is now set up, and you can see the most valuable parts, 125 turbo motors, 375 cooling units, and 125 fused uh, modular frames. So those are the most expensive things. You can put those in a box so that you don't overbuild and overuse those uh, more rare items. And we're gonna, gonna stamp it down. And here comes a fun thing. I don't think I can stamp it down because I only have eight of these sloopies back uh, remaining. That's not great. Uh, I'm gonna have to do this, and I'm gonna have to do that. Did we remember to save it? I don't know. Let's let's hope. And then I'm gonna build it here. That is the propulsion there. And I'll just place it somewhat approximately like that. Sweet. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to take the belts out the back. 
and bring them down there. And we will also be then making all the bus lines, making those ready, so we're ready to put it in here. Here we are, we have lots of glorious expensive stuff on the belt, just ready to go in and all, everything is hooked up. We have lines on the back, going back one back towards our space elevator and then I, it is time for us to hook this up. I'm going to hook it up from this side because this is the stuff that needs to be done first. And there we go, and there, and there, and there. That will put a little bit of strain on our base. I'm going to hook up everything and then we're going to go back and monitor each one, how they are performing. If they're performing, if they're working, if we made any silly mistakes. Yeah. So let's go back to this one. And start from here. This is the one that started first. Is it started? Yes, it is. Is it working on some uh, plates? It absolutely is. It takes 19.2 seconds. So we already got, we got one smart plate. And this is the thing, right? The first craft will not be using the effect of the summer so we'll not get the effect of the summer sloop but the next one will that means we are always going to have like an odd number here for, yeah, that's just how it is right so they will come out as two at a time and it comes in looking good we are now making the module and you can see that this module it makes two modules at a time but this one will need five modules before it even gets started so we're going to look at the other ones first to see how they're working and then come back and see if it started up this is happy, it's making some beams. Beams are coming in, it's happy, it's making some virtual framework. This is happy, but also missing some virtual framework. But everything else seems to be going in. Let's get to go for this one. This is kind of the, the bigger, more complex one. As we allow more time to get started, we are working on the Caterium wire. Wire becomes cables at 125 per minute. And then it comes in and it gets supplemented with some status and it becomes 12.5 automated wiring per minute, which is in progress. Up here we have uh, every, almost everything, we're missing the, oh, there we go, the automated wiring and now we start with the adaptive control unit with circuit boards, heavy module frames and computers, that will be that one. I'll go out here and split it into this so we get the adaptive control units in each of those but we have the supercomputers coming in so oh, there we go, there's one inbound here, one adaptive control unit. Let's go back to the original here and see how that's progressing. So uh, this one's working just Truly saturated, working, happy. Okay, yeah, we got three. We're gonna need to get two more before this one actually uh, is is starting to work. But it looks like things are working. Uh, let's see. So this one is also working. Yeah, we're working on the construction on this one. So I'm gonna go all the way back to the elevator because those are only three of the four items needed. But we do have a lot of uh, of nuclear pasta. If we just look at our inventory, uh, pasta. There we go, 250 in storage, that means also 50 that's waiting to be put in. Plus whatever we have in the storage box, plus whatever we uh, have over here lying around. And you can also just craft it into a box and then just be done with it. But I really like the idea of just as I'm working on building stuff and just expanding, I have, I can see that it's progressing. So I'm just going to go in here. Boop, that got the first one done. So we don't have anything on the belt yet. Let's just go back and see if we can start seeing something on the belt. Was there anything? No? There. No, that was just a speck of dust in the air. Not yet. There we go. The first item. One director control system is coming in. And unfortunately that comes in by one. And there are two Propul uh, magnetic uh, control units, whatever, magnetic things. There's another of those. Uh, the fact that it comes in one by one is a little bit weird. Oh, no, no, that's actually true because this is a director system and it is just output. And the first batch will only be singles and the second batch will be two at a time. So the next batch will get in there and look at that. We got the first bits of director control systems coming out in doubles. And that works. Oh, look at that. Now that comes in out in quadruples. The only thing remaining that we're not really seeing yet is up here. That is, oh, it's almost done. But this is, this is probably the first build. So it's only going to get one outbound. Let's just monitor as it comes out. Come on, you could do it. You could do it. Give it to us. There we go. No, no, this actually looks good. Hey, awesome. Two of those come out and then it starts. Oh, it's idling. Oh, because the margin of engine is not fast enough is it not fast enough it's 3.25 this is 3.125 hmm hmm 
should be fast enough. I really think it should be. There we go. Now it starts. I'll keep an eye on this. But in, in all specs, we can see that all the items are coming in. We are just waiting for the final product. You can kind of see it at a distance going in on the belt to just get it. Because as soon as we have one of each of the items, then we know that the flow is working. Maybe there's something on ratios, which I can always just go check. And then it's basically about, uh, about mating 99 minutes. And then we'll just come check back and see if there's anything new and exciting that's happening. Here we are back at the hub or back at the construction facility. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch off the last of these. I just put some switches here because why not? So basically that means this one stops working because there's no reason for this to continue. The other one also switched off because we have 100, 248 of the propulsion unit. That was the one that was somehow lacking a little bit behind. It's actually understandable because it was the one that uh, has the modular engines and they take a little bit longer to build. Now, I think I saw two uh, propulsion things go out on the belt. And therefore I switched it off. But um, if I didn't, then this is a little bit sad. Uh, come on. Yeah, there we go. 250. Exactly. So that's pretty good. We probably have a few of the other ones that are still stuck. Yeah, the few of the other ones are still stuck here. But that means we get to round off this episode with the launch and unlocking of tier 9. And that means in the next episode, we will be doing... All the exploration of something that's completely new, all the Tech 9 tier 9 stuff, I'll be doing that on Twitch. So come by on my Twitch streams at uh, on Twitch TV slash Nilos at 8 p.m. Central European time. And then we're going to be exploring it together. And then of course, I will also make lots of coverage for it for um, for this uh, yeah, for the YouTube series. And of course, remember, all the blueprints you're seeing, those are available to Patreon supporters. So thank you everyone who's choosing to support the channel. And with these three blueprints that we made, it is super easy to make this uh, this part here. Welcome to the Please. Pioneers Got Power Problems presentation. Hmm. That was a joke. Anyway, you're familiar with the process. Just throw the lever and the automated systems will take over. Imagine all the time and effort that would be wasted if you had to do all that work as well. Some work is just better suited for machines. Phase 5 contains technology the human brain cannot comprehend, so just trust in me and fix it policy and everything will go as planned. Answering nice. all your questions will take time we simply do not have. Everything is going to be just fine, so long as you do your job. We've come this far together after all, haven't we? Anyway, you know what to do. Just don't forget to keep producing previous project parts and plan ahead when setting up new production lines and make sure not to leave it all until the last moment. All right, so let's launch it and then see how this expands. And uh, it's complicated and you wouldn't get it. It's, it's both a little bit lazy and a little bit clever. It's more clever than lazy, to be honest. Because, uh, yeah, trying to explain quantum stuff in uh, gaming pseudo mumbo jumbo not always successful here we go let's get that cloud car blown away as we send the cantina up to the space station Whee! all right let's see what gets built hmm, more stuff hmm, those are rocket engines interesting also rocket engines on the other side because then it doesn't really make sense nope no rocket engines on that side more stuff okay so that looks like a ship that's being built up there it's more stuff it would be cool if we could get up there wouldn't it there you go and there is also like an introduction to tier 9 uh, when it lands so let's hear that and thank you very much for joining and uh, remember to hit the like button subscribe to the channel and all that good stuff and i'll see you in the next episode until then take care and stay effective phase four of project assembly completed if style was measured in my performance reports yours would be something special regardless saving the day is within our grasp do not lose focus now you must understand the weight on your shoulders, but you are not alone. I am here, and I know exactly what's at stake. This goes beyond Earth. Your actions will affect the universe at large. You might think I am exaggerating. Perhaps you will understand once you finish project assembly. Phase 5 awaits. I expect your best work.